Hear the word today through the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verses 44 through 48. Listen now for the word of the Lord. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I want to start today uh, by saying a very, very special thank you to our youth. Uh, What a wonderful worship service uh, they provided for us last week. They led for us, and uh, they spoke the word to us. At the end of the service, one of our members said to me, we are doing something right. To see our youth up there is so encouraging, isn't it? To hear the word from them. To our youth, you remind us of that, uh, that something good is going on here, that God continues to work in and among us. Um, And that is important, right? Because we know that we need encouragement from time to time, don't we? Life has a way of kind of wearing us down, breaking us down a little bit, and to have encouragement that there is something good going on, that God is at work in our midst is so important. One of our youth uh, talked about the story of David and and Goliath. All of our youth, uh, uh, several of our youth shared uh, how their faith stories uh, were shaped here in the church or in activities that the church uh, sponsored and sent them to. Um, and, um, and, And we've been talking about how stories shape our faith, our own stories Uh, help us understand God in life, but then the stories of our faith also are lived out in our lives. And I was just thinking about David and Goliath, what a powerful story that that when we cling to that story, it helps make us who we are. And so what a wonderful reminder of the power of God, a wonderful reminder to be encouraged and emboldened as the church, Uh, and, and what a wonderful reminder of the difference we make in this place. And so we are speaking of power and the difference that we make in this place all month, actually, as we continue to look at Acts and the early church and the power that was there in the presence of the church, um, especially when we recognize we're that same church just generations later. It's incredible to think that when we see these stories. Now, we don't often talk, especially, I think, in in Presbyterian circles, of, of the power of the church Uh, at least not in these terms, and often I think that's because, you know, our tradition, our Presbyterian tradition is is born in a time when power was was wielded in the church, maybe for for ungodly purposes, and so we're a little hesitant to talk about the power of the church and authority within the church. And I think we often don't talk about our power within the church or the power of the church because of what we said a moment ago. Life has a way of wearing us down. And we forget the incredible power and authority that God has given the church to bear the banner of the kingdom of heaven on earth. And so we're going to be looking a little bit at that this month. It's a power uh, that we have in Jesus Christ. If we look again at the early church in Acts, Peter is speaking and the Holy Spirit comes upon all who hear the word, not just those who were already believers, we're told. Those, all of those who heard the word. You hear that, the Holy Spirit fell upon those who heard. It's Popeye eating his spinach. It's Wonder Twins activating their powers. It's Superman going into the phone booth. You know, that's that place where we used to have to make calls out in public. This is power. This is the power, and in this case, this is the power to change the rules, because the rules before that were Gentiles did not have access to God. Gentiles were not welcome in the community of faith. Now they are. 
It's also God's power to change hearts and minds. Even Peter, who was opposed to Gentiles entering the faith initially without becoming Jewish first, is now fully on board with accepting into the fellowship of Christ all who believe. This is power. And it is God's power. It's, it's, you see, it's not about us. It's not about what we're doing. It's not what we know or understanding. It's not what we can accomplish. It's not what we can imagine even. It's God's power that we can have if we're in God. And then we have all those things in our lives. The power to do. The power to understand. The power to accomplish the power to imagine. As one scholar who was looking at this passage in Acts says, the gift of Jesus Christ for the Gentiles is undeniable because they showed signs of the Holy Spirit. Do you see that? Who can argue against the Spirit of God? Who can argue against what God is clearly doing in the midst of the fellowship? God's power was with them. It was clear. And it was embraced by Peter and the rest of the church authorities. And so my question to you, is God still here? Is God still among us? Is God's power still made known in the things that we do and we see? Is God with us right now? Well, I for one believe it, or I wouldn't be here with you. And I think that a lot of you believe it as well, or you wouldn't have bothered to get up on a Sunday morning to come here. So what signs then do we have, though, that the Spirit is here and doing things in our midst? What evidence can we speak to well, 1 John 5, which talks about the power of God in our victory. Did you see this? For whatever is born of God conquers the world. Susan read this a few moments ago. And this is a victory that conquers the world. Our faith. You see, it's our, it's our faith. Our faith in what? Our faith in whom? Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you hear that? Those who believe conquer the world the world. You see, the church doesn't exist for its own sake. We're not here because it feels good. I, I hope it does. I hope something that's happening feels right and encouraging and nurturing for you. But we're here because God deserves our worship. And we're here because Christ beckons us to follow. In that is power. Let me explain See, First John, he goes on to say, the Spirit is the one that testifies. The Spirit is the one that testifies. You see, the Spirit gives us assurance. As I said before, we can get discouraged. But the Spirit of God, when it's presence, present with us, gives us assurance. Let me say a few things about that. Because I think it's really important. And this goes back again to our tradition. I, I've been reading through the book of, of Judges again lately. The book of Judges in the Old Testament. I've read it maybe five or six times. And it, it's always so sad when I read it. There are some great stories in there, but there are some really sad stories too. And, and the author of the book of Judges says, says this line constantly. Everyone did what was right in their own eyes. You hear that over and over again. And then you see the consequences of that. You see what happens when everyone does what's right in their own eyes. Society breaks down. People, people feud with each other. They go to what, one Jewish tribe goes to war against and annihilate you know, others, and then others decimate that tribe and destroy it almost completely. This is, this is the result of what everyone does, what is good in their own eyes. Our Presbyterian tradition is, 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 is skeptical of what is called the ecstatic. Okay? And, and, and what that means, and I'm kind of looking at the camera, because, and I don't often do that, but we have an audience, we forget that sometimes, during the week, who, who tune in on TV or who watch on the internet, who aren't always Presbyterian. So we Presbyterians have a skepticism of ecstatic religious experiences. doesn't mean we don't believe in them. 
It just means if, if I go off by myself and pray and I come back and I say some crazy thing that God told me, right? You all get to look at me and say, I'm going to pray about that too and see if I believe that that's really what God said. That's our tradition, is that we discern how the Spirit is moving amongst us. We see that in Acts, when the Spirit clearly descends upon the people. All the people who hear Peter preaching. And Peter and the early church affirm, yes, yes, God is here. God is with the people. And so when we as a church recognize that the Spirit is moving in our midst, that God is doing something mighty and incredible and worthwhile and life-giving and hope-filling, we can affirm that together. It's not just about our church experience, our life of faith. is not just about what feels right or feels good. It's the fact that we recognize together God is in this. God is in what is happening. Does that make sense? Do you follow me? Sort of. We recognize together that God is here. And so that assures us, that gives us assurance that God is giving us direction. We're not just up to our own to figure out what God wants us to do. God's going to, through the Spirit and through our prayer life together, through studying Scripture together, through working together to understand God gives the church direction in our lives and as a people. And then God also assures us by reminding us we're not alone. God is with us. How defeating is it to think that we want to change things in the world, but we don't know where to begin? We don't know if we can make a difference. Look at the difference that God has made, the church has made. Sure, the church has flaws. We've seen that in history. But consider all the, the things that the church has taught about Christ's love over the centuries, about what good society looks like, about how power can be shared and not abused, about how the greatest among us will be those who serve others, not who make others serve us. That's the teaching of the church through the centuries. That makes a difference in the world. We believe that. We believe God is doing something in those words and doing something in this place. It's the Holy Spirit moving us, and it's sometimes even the Holy Spirit moving across the world, even when we don't know God's about to do it. And so we can have a Youth Sunday, for instance, when our young men and women remind us of the difference that this place makes in their life. Surely we can testify the Holy Spirit is in that. God is still here. God's power is amongst us, moving in this place, moving in your life. And we know that this power is not for its own sake. In 1 John, again, we were told that that power that we have is the power of love. Cue up Huey Lewis in the news. Back to the future fans. It's the power of God's love in our lives. God's love is that we get to live in God's power. God's power is that which makes God's love known to us. You see how the two are hand in hand, and we get to live in that in our lives. So I want to challenge you, and you're going to hear this challenge throughout the month. This is why we're here. This is the purpose of the church, to discern what God is still doing in the world and in our lives, and to be the power and love of God's Spirit manifest in the world, or to make manifest the Spirit of love and power in the world. That is, when we see God doing something, we get to celebrate it and lift it up to others. So when we say, for instance, with our new purpose statement that we joyfully seek to follow Jesus, follow Jesus and extend God's loving community to all people, this is the power and the love of the Spirit 
all of this to the power of having a relationship with Jesus and the community that we share with one another. That we love and share with God and each other. That which we love and share with God and each other is that spirit of love and power. And the good news is we get to share that with the rest of the world. And believe me, it makes a difference. Amen? Amen.